leader of Joining Forces. It's a national initiative to support and honor America's service members and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama. Welcome back. It's good to be back. It's great to you have look you back. Great. Well, that's kind of you to say. That's true. But you're not under oath. I'm not. <laughs> uh, I want to know. Yeah. Uh, this is the question I ask a lot of people mm -hmm. because I need all the help I can get in okay. this regard. Uh, I have an 11 year old son. He's 11 already. 11 years old. Your, your daughters are a bit older. Still in all. How are they doing? They're doing great. They're just get they're growing up, and it happens so fast, as you know. Mm -hmm. I got one driving. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, she's out on the road. Really? She has her license, and she can go. If you say, "Can you run down to the A and P? We need." I, I did that because you know when kids get their licenses, they're ready to do anything. So she actually came and she said, Ma, you need any errands? Mm -hmm. And a bunch of people handed her, you know, I need you to get this from CVS and pick this. She went out. She so went out and ran errands and this parked is, in the lot. This is lot. one of those landmark things, isn't it? From this point yeah. on, it, it will all be different for you and for her. I know. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, she she can't. She got a curfew, right? She can't. She's just, got. She has a curfew. What yeah, she, she can't a... just roll around. It it depends on <laughs> what's going. Yeah, she can't just roll in the house. A road trip. Yeah, yeah. No, she's she's got a curfew, and uh, you know it depends on what's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's a party and we know what time it's going to be over, you know we make sure she's back right after the party. Now, when you say party, and all I'm thinking about is, well, there's probably going to be boys at the party. There are always boys yeah. at the parties. How's that working? That's okay. You know, uh, Barack is handling that okay. Oh, he handles that. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing well. But I think they, I've mentioned they're so this. normal, though. They I, I, do. I, you, the kids are normal? Yeah, well, that's yeah, a, they a do great credit stuff. to you. I, I, I mean, it's virtually impossible to raise normal kids anyway, but when you're raising them in the White House, that makes it uh, a billion times more pressure, I would think. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, but we treat it, we treat them normally. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't let our circumstance become an excuse for them. See, I do. You. <laughs> My, my son thinks he's being raised in the White House. Uh. <laughs> and it's working out just fine. Is so he happy far. there? Uh, but, but here's the thing of it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's an 11-year-old boy and can be uh, cheerful and happy yeah. and nothing but fun. And then it's like the, the cloud comes yeah. over yeah. and all of a sudden all we do is argue. And reason escapes the planet. Yeah, that's, yeah, you're, you're in that phase, and it, it goes away. We have one of each, and I'm not going to say which one is which, <laughs> but we have one who generally stays here, and then we have one we call our grumpy cat. Right. The grumpy yeah. cat. Can the, I our guess? Our salty biscuit. <laughs> the salty biscuit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just never know what yeah. you're going to get. From, Does the salty biscuit have a driver's license? <laughs> I'm not saying. All right. They could be watching. They might be. But they sure. know who they are. Yeah. Uh, 
So, so n now, uh, like my son is just counting down the the weeks till he's out of school, which yeah. is pretty short now. The same yeah, with the girls. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, now, what do you want them doing for the summer? What do they do? You know, we we really plan that out because an idol mine, you know how that goes. So, yeah, we've got sports camps. Uh, Malia actually does internships, so she'll be doing some work. Mm -hmm. um, we might put Sasha to work this this summer, make her earn, earn a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, why not? Nothing wrong with that. Put her to work. Uh, I'm I'm uh, retiring in a few weeks. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I know that uh, y your time at the White House in a couple of years, same sort of thing. You won't be retiring though. No. Uh, but do you ever glimpse down far that far down the road? What like? whether I'm going to be running for president or anything. I heard you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was watching you. <laughs> That's something to consider. I mean, anybody. I think we should hang out together. I think well, you'll, you have, you'll have you'll have a couple of years. Don't say that if you're kidding. <laughs> I'm not. We could do things. I would love to do something. I would help you raise your children. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can help you that's, through those dark times. That's that's both delightful and pathetic, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Did you hear what the president's wife is doing now? You you seem so challenged. <laughs> I it's am, a scary oh, thing for you. I, I can walk you through it. <laughs> I can take you down that road, I that keep, grumpy cat road. I, I can get saying, you out on the other side. You're you going to be fine, Dave. All the problems will be for the stepfather. Oh. <laughs> That's what I... <laughs> <laughs> you got to hang in there. I will hang in there. It's the only thing that keeps me hanging, as a That's matter of fact. Good. Uh, I tell you what, when we come back, we'll talk about other things. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Michelle Obama. <laughs> Mrs. Obama is here, everyone. I'm, uh, like, like so many things in life, I begin uh, from a position of ignorance. And here's what I did not realize. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was pointed out to me that uh, men and women who have served our country uh, in the, the uh, armed forces, mm -hmm. come home and and don't have jobs. Yeah. I was stunned by that, and yeah. now uh, I learn e even adding to the problem, uh, don't have places to live. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a remarkable thing that uh, this country will facilitate mm -hmm. sending them, training them, and sending them all over the world yeah. to defend us. That's right. But then when they come home. Now, has that always been the case in the military? You know, I, I don't know the numbers, but it's, you know, it, it's a challenge. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why we started joining forces. And we've been celebrating the fourth anniversary of joining forces over the last month. Um, because Jill Biden and I, the president, the vice president, we feel like we just can't give our men and women in uniform our veterans and their families lip service of mm -hmm. gratitude, which is sometimes what we do. You know, we celebrate their arrival and then they forget, don't, forget they don't have about. jobs. Yeah. Um, but here's the beauty, um, is that when leaders ask the country to step up on behalf of our men and women in uniform, they do. So in the area of employment, for example, in the last four years, businesses have hired and trained more than 850,000 veterans and spouses in That's four right. years. So we've seen the unemployment rate among veterans lower. And there's more that we can do because these businesses are finally realizing, look, we spend billions of dollars preparing and training these men and women. These are some of the most highly trained, highly skilled men and women in the country. 
and they're ready to serve in our businesses. And they're some of the best employees you'll have. Um, so more and more businesses are starting to understand this problem and they're stepping up. Yeah. Now, homelessness, as you say, is another issue. Um, now, I, I just want to clarify that the vast majority of men and women in uniform come back home. They're, they ha build good lives. They do find jobs. They, they live in homes. But even if there's one veteran who's living on our streets, that's one too many. It's a disgrace. It should be an outrage. So, What I like about this is uh, the, the solution is working. How, how is it facilitated? How, how do they get jobs? How do they find home, uh, homes for themselves? Well, for the, the homelessness challenge, we issued a challenge to mayors and city officials all throughout the country uh, to end homelessness by the year 2015. That's the president's goal. The VA is stepping up. Uh, mayors across the country are stepping up, governors. We visited New Orleans last week, Joe Biden and I, well, it was just me on, on that visit to celebrate New Orleans that has uh, uh, essentially eliminated homelessness in their city. It's they've important. done it. They've achieved it. And they've done it by focusing on the effort. I mean, there are wonderful nonprofit organizations out there that already know what to do, and it's about finding the veterans, getting them help, uh, getting resources for them to pay security deposits, so it can be done. Uh, L.A. has stepped up, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, there, there are many cities on their way what, to what ending is this the, problem. What is the vet center? Is, is that where you go physically to, to find help or to get the aid? Uh, we, uh, Jill, Jill and I visited a veteran center in Maryland last week to highlight the wonderful resources that are available to veterans, many of whom are out there living alone. They don't have a connection to the folks they served with. And these vet centers um, are there to provide resources that are tailor-made for many of these veterans and their families. And they're all over the country. They're friendly. Many of them are run by trained veterans who know this work. They know how to make veterans feel comfortable. And we need to make sure that the veterans out there know that these centers exist. They're mobile, mobile veteran centers that people can access. But these are important resources. We want to make sure folks go to joiningforces.gov to find out where their vet center but, is in their community. Now, before joining forces, were, were there resources available that men and women did not know about or were difficult to access or did not exist? That's always the case. I mean, because when men and women are discharged, oftentimes they just go back out into communities. Many of them don't even sometimes don't even feel comfortable identifying as veterans mm -hmm. because they don't know how they're going to be welcomed home. And that's on us as a nation. But one thing that made me feel really good during this visit, I was this vet center visit, is that we met with a Vietnam veteran who said to me and Jill, she, he said, whatever you all are doing is working. He said, because I never wore my veteran stuff. I never wore any uh, hats or anything that indicated that I was a veteran because I was, he was ashamed and he didn't get the recognition. But now he said, folks stop him on the streets and they thank him. You know, he never goes out of the house now without something that indicates that he's a veteran because folks are stepping up. They're recognizing that these men and women have served us and that we have to step up for them. We have to show them our, our gratitude in ways big and small and well, step by step. Well, that's we can one change of, this. One of a million heartbreaking stories yeah. that the, the person was ashamed to let the world know that he had, had served. Well, we can United change States. that. 
You know, that's the beauty of it. It's it's on us. And oh, I remember that the, the people would always invoke the GI Bill, that they yeah. would be able to go to college on the GI Bill and, and maybe get a house loan on a GI Bill yeah. on and on. Do those things still exist? The GI Bill place? still exists. There's still resources out there. There are uh, great health care options. There are still challenges with the system because we need to fund the VA better than we do. We have work to do, uh, but these resources exist and we need to make sure that every service member and every veteran knows what resources are available to them. And joiningforces.gov is a place folks can go to, to yeah. find out what, what's accessible. Well, nice going. I mean, it's always great uh, to attack a problem, yeah. but to see results, and in the case of you cited in New Orleans, to have it be uh, nearly 100% successful is just remarkable. Well, everyone is stepping up. Yeah. We're just shining the light. And that's why it's important to have leaders in the White House who are committed to this issue. And this, I hope that whoever is in the White House next sets the bar even higher than we have. This can never be a problem again in this country. We should be ashamed of ourselves. It is. It's shameful. And uh, again, I, I don't know this, but I have a feeling that the numbers of returning veterans now are They're greater gonna go up. than That's any right. other time may, may be in the history of, of this right. country. So, but, but at the other end of it, it would be great if we do away with war, then th this wouldn't be a problem at all, would it? But what are we going to do? And then now I want to talk about education because I'm a graduate of Ball State University. So. Go Ball State. Go Cardinals. Go Cardinals. Yeah, where, where did you go? Princeton. <laughs> go Tigers. Yeah, Tigers. We'll be right back. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, um, education. Uh, education's a, 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 a concern uh, from from kindergarten all the way up through college, and and again, uh, why the United States, the most resourceful, most powerful country in the world? Why why have we let education slip away from us as, as it seems we have? Yeah, well, we you know we celebrate you know these kids who are uh, going pro, you know. Signing day, when we think about signing day, we think about those kids well, who you, are going you're talking to, about going from basketball to professional or right, football. Right, right, or football. Yeah, baseball, whatever. But what about all the thousands of kids who are going to college despite the odds, mm -hmm. you know, who do everything right. They don't get involved in gangs and drugs. They come from tough communities, yet they're going to college. So we need to be celebrating them. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing. Tomorrow, I'm headed to Detroit, and we're going to be doing a huge signing day for kids who are graduating for high, from high school and continuing their education, either four-year, two-year, or vocational program. So that's what we want signing day to be in the United States of America. What can people do to help uh, a kid who may be, because I think it's obvious now, going to high school is fine. It's not but, enough but, anymore. All right, not enough. Yeah. So how do we facilitate, you know, this resource? How do we move it to the next level? Is, is it just contributions? Can we help somebody? Absolutely. I mean, a, a lot of schools are just under-resourced. So when you think of college counseling support, the average kid, school doesn't have college counseling. They have school counselors who are asked to do everything. But who's helping these kids with financial aid applications? Mm -hmm. There's money out there for kids that they don't even know they can access. You know, what, what do kids who've never been on a college campus know about what it's like to go? So universities can step up and create programs to prepare and mentor kids into college. Um, businesses can do it. Look, if you've gone to college, 
you can help a kid in your area get to college. Right. You can work on their applications and show, tell them about, you know, essays and help them prepare for their SATs. Um, but we just need to change the culture. We've got to make going to college cool again, just like going pro. We've got to up the ante for our kids. I think I know of, um, uh, maybe this is Jeffrey Canada, maybe this is what his uh, program is all about, where, where kids uh, get a, a, a pal, a buddy, mm -hmm. uh, somebody to help them through the the maze of, mm -hmm. of high school and then college applications and and it's pretty much a guarantee that uh, under that guidance they're going to get that degree and there are great programs out there jeffrey canada as you say he's just been amazing and there are wonderful resources out there but if kids don't know about college they don't know that that's a dream they should have you know we've got to kind of start there and we've got to make college as glamorous as, See, you know. See, I'm surprised. That, that no longer is a dream for kids to go to college? You know, what do we celebrate? We celebrate athletes. We celebrate, you know, we celebrate the celebrities. We celebrate reality TV. Kids want it quick and fast. They want to be famous. Right. They, you know, and what are the chances of a kid going pro? Uh, but we know the odds uh, of a kid who goes to college and gets an education. It's I had to go to college. When, when I was a kid, I had to go to yeah. college, and I yeah. was going to be the first kid, the per person in my family mm -hmm. to graduate college. Yeah. Now, were, were you driven like that when you were a kid? It was an expectation in my household, and my parents who didn't go to college just knew innately that that was just something we had to do. Yeah. Um, so it was never a question, even though we didn't have resources, and that's something I tell parents out there, you don't have to be a college graduate to set that bar for your kids in your home. I remember the day my parents sat me down and they said, Dave, it's time to go to college. Mm -hmm. They said, Dave, uh, if you don't go to college and graduate, there's no way you'll get a talk show. <laughs> <laughs> and look at you now. I, I remember that. Yeah, look at Look at me now. <laughs> Look at you now. We're so proud of you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. You made something of yourself. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you how delightful it is to, to see you again. It's been uh, too long, but uh, every time I do see you, uh, my day is better. Uh, and if you can get a better day, then turn it into a better week. And by God, it's a... Great Thank pleasure to see you. The feeling is mutual. Now, I know that there's something, uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be a surprise, but I mean, I have, hope it's a surprise. We have it's something. To all right, surprise, tell, tell people yes. what we have here. Well, here, I'm here because you're leaving. Mm -hmm. And you've been just a tremendous support to me, to my family, but mostly to our men and women in uniform and our veterans it's you been have a been a great association for you've us. been just such a huge supporter so we decided to uh pay tribute to you uh we have here with us today the president's own united states marine band Whoa. in honor of you dave really?